The purpose of this presentation is to provide some basic knowledge on how a microwave interacts with and thus heats various materials and discuss why chemists use this tool to prepare samples. When analyzing a sample for metals, one typically uses an ICP or an ICP-MS. Regardless, the spectrometer needs a homogeneous aqueous solution in order to aspirate the liquid into the spectrometer. For this reason, we must digest the sample using acids to destroy the matrix, leaving the analytes in solution. Pressurized digestion allows one to heat acids above the boiling point. This increases the oxidation potential for certain acids, like nitric, as well as increasing the solubility of the solution. Think of how hot water will dissolve more than cold water. The digestion process also goes much faster and provides a more complete digestion as compared to hot blocks. The use of a microwave to provide the energy allows for the instantaneous heating of the liquids as compared to conventional heating. Microwave energy is applied at full power instantly. Microwave energy can be modulated much better than conventional conductive heat, so it produces a more uniform heating of the sample. As illustrated in this diagram, microwave energy has many advantages versus conductive heat. Microwaves are transparent to materials such as Pyrex glass and Teflon. Therefore, it passes right through and into the sample. Conductive heating requires each surface to be heated and then transferred to the next. It is not efficient. To further understand how microwaves heat materials, let's look at the electromagnetic spectrum and specifically where microwaves are located on it. You will notice that microwaves are located in the low energy spectrum area to the right between IR and radio waves. It is a region that provides for molecular rotation interaction. As compared to other forms of radiation, microwave is not very energetic. In fact, the quantum energy of a microwave is far less than the bond energy required to break a simple hydrogen bond. So how do microwaves interact with molecules and break bonds? The answer is twofold. The primary mechanism is dipole rotation, while a secondary process is ionic conduction. As dipole rotation is by far the main source of heating, we will focus on this first. We can illustrate dipole rotation using a water molecule and a sine wave, which illustrates the positive and negative side of the electromagnetic field. We show the water molecule at three points in time. At time zero, the molecule is aligned with the field in that the negative electrons of oxygen is aligned. However, just one-tenth of a nanosecond later, the field, which is moving at the speed of light, has shifted and the molecule is not aligned so it will rotate to attempt to realign itself. But the field keeps rapidly moving, causing the molecule to rotate back and forth continuously. Since we are in a liquid state, molecules are packed fairly tight together, so this rotation causes them to bump into each other. This causes friction, which causes rapid heating. There are many ways to predict if a molecule can be heated by microwave energy. The easiest is to look at the dipole moment. The stronger the dipole, the more easily it will be heated in a microwave field. In our chart, you can see that all mineral acids have a dipole moment above 1.0. Nitric acid is a super absorber at above 2.0. The second heating mechanism is ionic conductance. Positively or negatively charged ions will be distorted by the electromagnetic field, which causes them to move toward the positive or negative sides of the field. This is known as the electrophoretic effect. When microwaves come into contact with materials, they can behave in different ways. We classify the materials into three general categories. Conductor materials are metallic materials that reflect microwave energy and do not heat. Think of the metal walls of a microwave oven. Insulators are materials that are transparent to microwave energy, but then hold the heat generated by the collision energy. Teflon, glass, and quartz are good examples, which is why these are the primary materials used in our digestion vessels. Dielectric materials 
will interact and absorb microwave energy. You do not want to have these materials present in the cavity as either part of a vessel or turntable, for example. These materials can change the microwave pattern and therefore create hot and cold spots in the microwave cavity. This will lead to uneven heating. When acids are heated in a microwave, they begin to break bonds, as shown in this diagram. The first reaction represents an organic reaction in which lots of carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide gases are released. Vessels must be able to handle the production of these gases. The second and third reaction represent different types of inorganic reactions which produce much less gas. Organic-based samples, those which contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, are typically digested in nitric acid alone at temperatures between 175 and 200 degrees Celsius. Since nitric acid is heated well above the boiling point, you can eliminate other oxidizing acids such as perchloric or hydrogen peroxide. The main concern is for an exothermic reaction which generates a lot of gas quickly. Sample size and the right method will help with this. Inorganic samples are more complex and will require different acid mixtures in order to provide a completely digested sample. Some inorganic materials will require temperatures as high as 300 degrees Celsius in order to get a total digest. Inorganic digestion is more complicated than organic. Fortunately, we have developed application notes to cover a vast majority of these. In conclusion, it can be said that microwave digestion is a proven technique to significantly speed up and provide for a more complete digestion for trace metals analysis. A more complete digestion helps reduce interferences in the analyzer. Organic and inorganic samples heat very differently, so they cannot be digested in a single batch. For more information on sample preparation of organics and inorganics, please visit our website at www.cem.com/usp232. Thank you.